So in this part of this tool, we will have to add the ground so that the player have something to run on. I am not going to create the whole level right now. Um, we will simply add the lowest floor of the level, as you saw in the intro, um, so that the player can run and jump. And then later, when we get to the platforms, we'll of course add platforms and some other uh, levels that he can jump up on. But for now, let's start with the ground. First of all, we'll need these three sprites here, the left side, the middle, and the right side. So just take all these three. Um, actually, no, don't don't select all of them because then it's going to make an animation. But take them one by one and drag them into your scene like this. And when you have done that, you can rename the first one to left side. Um, filler is the middle one and right side. So now you have the left side, a filler for the middle and the right side. Then we can select all of them and take the scale and pump it up to two in all directions here so they get a little larger um, I think it fits better with the player if, if they are like twice the size then we'll have to take the left side and place it in the left side here there we go and you can maybe move it a little down so that it goes just over the edge of the camera right now at least then we take the filler and we place the filler right next to this ground here and we need to make sure that it has the same height. So the easiest way to do that is actually to select the left side, copy the Y uh, value, and click on the filler and paste the Y value here. So now they have the same height. Another thing is that we need to place them right next to each other so that they align up and tile along the way. Um, to make this easier, we can create a game object by clicking Create select empty and this is going to be the parent object of all these uh, ground pieces here so we're going to say green object rename it to bottom bottom ground and then we can take our right side put as child filler as child and the left side as child here and we can move them a little round so it makes sense for now we can take the right side and place it in the right side here and let's say that we need we need some space to walk around on, so filler can be duplicated one time at least. Move it out. So now we have like three. So duplicate again, four, and duplicate five. And you can also duplicate more at the time if that's what you want to. And there we go. So so now we have them, and then we can take the right side, place it right next to it and paste the y axis here sorry let's just see what the others are y is zero so let's take the right side and put it as zero here so now we have something that the player should be able to work on it's called filler one two three four um, maybe you want to change this just so they are all called filler you can rename all of them actually at the same time Maybe that makes more sense. And then you can put the right side on the right side of them. So you can see left side and then it goes filler all the way and then right side. Okay. So now we have some ground that we can stand on. Um, you might want to add the background as well just to make it look a little um, better. So we can go to the BG and add it to the scene. And then move it on top of all these. And then we can scale it up. Um, let's just try 3.8 and 3.8. Okay. So now we have our background, and you can move it up so that the bottom, see here, the bottom of the background here is aligned with the bottom of, of the screen, as you can see here. So we can actually move it a little down, just like this. There we go. Or actually maybe want to do so that we can see the edge of the trees or something. Yeah. You can always change this, uh, scale it up, scale it down uh, according to what, what you want actually. So that's it's not that important to um, to set the scale correctly here. Because maybe it's a little too large. Anyway, um, now we need to make sure that the background is always behind our bottom ground of, and so on. So we need to reference the player. So the player is in order zero. So 
this order in layer decides if something should go behind something else or in front of something else. So we put the player as zero because that's the middle and everything that needs to be in front of the player should have one or above. Everything that needs to go behind the player should have minus uh, one and below. So the background needs to be all the way in the back so we can set that to minus 10. Then everything goes in front of the background. And then we can say the bottom ground here, we should select all the sprites and say that they need to be in front of the player. So we put them at one. So now the player will never be um, behind them. And actually, maybe we want them to be behind because now the player is going to go behind the background if he runs on it. So actually, let, let's take all these tiles here again and put them at minus one so that when the player lands on them, if so, well, then the player will stand on it like this. Looks a little better, actually. We will also have to adjust the camera a little. Um, right now the size is 5. Let's try with 7.7. .7. Yeah, that zooms out a little as you can see. So this looks a little better. We can get a better overview of this. And then we can take the background again and move it a little down because now we can see the blue line at the bottom here. We're not interested in that so just move it down like so or something. Um, we might want to move the ground down as well so that it's aligned with the bottom edge. So we could take the bottom ground and move it all the way down here. Like this. Then move it all the way to the left so it just starts here at the edge or something. Okay. Um, so that's one side of the ground here. Um, I'm not sure if we would like to duplicate it. Let's try to take all these and right click on them and duplicate and then move them all the way to the right here. So now we have some gap we can jump over. <clears throat> In between that gap, we would like some water. So let's find the tiles, find the water here and drag it into our scene. And we set the size to two in all directions as well. See here, we want it like a little down maybe so that it has the same alignment. Let's just put it on the bottom ground if we put it underneath here. And we put the Y to zero, then you see it's a little too high, so okay, let's move it down. There we go. And then we can rename this to water. Right click on it, duplicate, place it next to it here. Then you'll see here. And then we can take, we have the filler and lift side and all this actually take all of it and move it a little so that it just covers the water here just like this there we go okay so now right now you can see there's an annoying edge here on the water just um, on the edge between the water and the ground and what we would like to do is to maybe take the water and move it a little up so that they are aligned and then we would like to have the water behind the ground at all times so we put the order in layer for the water minus two. So now the water always goes behind the edges of the ground. So now it looks a little more realistic, so to say, because they go behind these. It looks better now, at least. Okay. So we can rename both of these to water. And these could be easily filler as well. So we don't have that one, two, three, four. And we have a right side. and a lift side here. Okay. So here we have the first part um, and here we have the next part. So we might move them around so that the lift side goes on top here of these. So we have them encapsulated and this is also a filler. And we can also put the water in between them if that's what we want. So they are aligned in the same order here. So we have lift side, fillers, fillers, right side. And then we have the water and then lift side and then all the fillers here down, down here and then the right side. I know the order is not totally correct with these, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, what else? So now we have some kind of ground we can walk on um, or at least it looks like we can walk on it but right now if we put the player in and if we click on the player and set his gravity scale to one well then if we 
play the game, he will just fall right through these. And the reason that he does that is because there's no colliders on anything at the moment. So first of all, we'll have to add a collider to our player. Um, and we can do that by clicking add component, write box, while we have selected the player. And then we need a box collider 2D. And this box collider here actually encapsulates the player. Let's try to remove the background so we can see something. So as you can see, the box collider here goes around the player. Um, maybe we're not interested in having it encapsulate the whole player because as you can see here there are some edges here we can look at more precise collision later but you can see he can land in the air here because there's like some edges around so maybe if we want to make it a little more realistic so to say we can take the size and make it a little smaller here so it only encapsulates his center or something so now he can't land his foot tip though but he can land on his in here but we can always adjust it this is just testing though so still, if we play the game, he falls to the ground. And the reason that he falls to the ground is because we haven't added any collision for our ground here. So this is our bottom ground, and we need to add some colliders for them. So add component, box collider 2D. So now you can see it has this small little box collider here. And if we would take this collider here and move it with the offset just under the player, like this, he would land on it when he falls to this place here. As you can see, he stands there. So we basically just need to take this box collider and make it fit here. So it needs to go to the edge here. Then there needs to be nothing. And then it needs to go all the way over here. So the easiest way to do this is to add two box colliders. Uh, one that goes from this edge to this edge. And then one that goes from here to all the way over there. So basically, place the box collider about the middle of, of the left side. And take the size here and expand it so that it goes to the edges of it. So if it doesn't fit, you can always adjust the offset here. You can see now the box collider goes to here. And it goes to the edge over here, maybe a little over. And then you can take the y-axis and move it up. It's maybe a little hard to see, but everything is green here. Um, but you can see this edge here, you can maybe put it up so it, it hits the lighter green part here so that the player will land on the lighter green part here so if we play the game now he will land here on the lighter green part as you can see right now he tips over when you run like this that's not uh, not very uh, good for your game because if the character runs he shouldn't tip over unless he's drunk or something so if we start running here he tips over and he runs on his face uh, over the edge here so we need to fix that and we can do that by clicking on the player going to the rigid body here and there is a little tab here called constraints and constraints will um, make sure that the physics system doesn't move the rotation or the position in those uh, uh, those directions and since this is a 2d rigid body we can only freeze the c rotation let's try to click freeze rotation and c value and let's see if it, he should stop falling on his face now when he's running and as you can see the character can now run and he can run over the edge here and then he just starts falling. So that was one side of the edge. The next thing we'll need to do is to add the collider to the right side. So basically click on the bottom ground again, click add component and select box collider 2D. Move it all the way to the other side, the right side here, as we can see. And then you have to expand it the same way as before with the size for X. And then move it so that it fits everything. Just keep moving it as you expand it. See here it's still a little too much to one side. There we go. So now it has the right width. We need to put it at the right position again. So we can basically zoom in here and take the Y offset and move it all the way up. Still hard to see, there we go. So the Y offset is 0 0.6, here's 0 0.63, so just duplicate that so it has the same offset, so it has the same height. So now the character is actually able to land on both sides. We can also land over here now. If you fall down, well then we also land on this edge here. But we still don't have a jump, so 
we can still run over the edge and then we fall. We can basically land on this one and then we fall. So we will need to, we will have to be able to jump over this uh, this ground here. And don't worry, later we'll make a ground check so that you don't just stand on the edge here. So, so this this shouldn't be possible this year. We we're going to fix that later because right now you can basically climb down like this, and that's not ideal either. But let's move the player to the left side so that he can land here like this and run from side to side. So that's it for this part of the tutorial for creating the bottom part of the level. In the next part we are going to add the jump so we can actually jump over this little gap here so we don't um, fall down and I guess we'll also start looking at the camera follow function.